Rick Perry is a liar, and I can prove it, and I'll get right to the point. While in Iowa, Rick Perry was asked a question by Rebecca Maxwell. She's the producer of SteveDace.com. Steve Dace hosts a conservative radio show in Iowa. You can find out more about his show at SteveDace.com. Anyway, this was Perry's response to Miss Maxwell when she asked him about his support for TARP. TARP stands for the Troubled Asset Relief Program, commonly known as the bank bailout. This took place in the fall of 2008 when Congress voted to give approximately $800 billion of our tax money to the biggest banks like Bank of America, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs, just to name a few. This is the exchange that took place with Steve Dace introducing the exchange on his website. Steve Dace, your host of the nationally syndicated Steve Dace radio program here at SteveDace.com. Friday morning in Newton, Iowa, Texas Governor Rick Perry hosted a town hall event as part of his presidential campaign here in the First in the Nation caucus state. Our very own Rebecca Maxwell caught up with Governor Perry since he's not doing a lot of media interviews and no press conferences and had an opportunity to ask the governor about his past endorsement of the controversial TARP bailout program, which a lot of people believe launched the Tea Party movement in America. Here's what he had to say. Hi, Governor Perry. Nice to meet you. you. Thanks for coming to Iowa. I have a quick question. You talked a lot about your record, and one thing that I was wondering about is your earlier support of TARP and how that... You How got, that makes got, a difference. You got wrong information. You didn't. You never supported TARP. No, ma'am. No. I thought I saw a letter where you had actually written encouraging the support of no, of TARP legislation. Not you, at all. You saw wrong. Okay. Well, I appreciate your answer, sir. Sure. We'll have more on Governor Perry and his flip flop when we go on the air today from 4 to 6 p.m. Central Time, right here at SteveDace.com. Now here, it's important to know the difference between a flip flop and a lie. With all due respect, Steve Dace got it wrong characterizing Rick Perry's response as a flip-flop. It was not a flip-flop. It was a lie. A flip-flop is when a politician changes his or her mind about an issue. These are examples of flip-flops. I actually did vote for the $87 billion before I voted against it. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I believe that since Roe v. Wade has been the law for 20 years, that we should sustain and support it. And I sustain and support that law and the right of a woman to make that preserve choice. and protect a woman's right to choose and have devoted and dedicated to honoring my word in that regard. What's your position on abortion? I'm pro-life. In these two cases, these establishment politicians changed their minds publicly and gave excuses for their behavior. The political problem with flip-flops is that it takes away credibility of the candidate who was flip-flopping because the flip-flopping makes the candidates look like they are pandering rather than being sincere. But this is not what Rick Perry is doing. He is actively denying and lying about something that took place. He doesn't say, for example, well, I support a TARP, but now I'm against it because I think it's a bad idea. That would be a flip-flop response. Instead, let's listen to what he is saying. He states, no, you got the wrong information. It's all wrong. Hi, Governor Perry. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming to Iowa. I have a quick question. You talked a lot about your record, and one thing that I was wondering about is your earlier support of TARP and how that you how got, that makes got, a difference. You got wrong information. You didn't. You never supported TARP. No, ma'am. No. I thought I saw a letter where you had actually written encouraging the support of no, of TARP legislation. Not you, at all. You saw wrong. Okay. Well, I appreciate your answer, sir. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen of the Republican Party, this is a lie. Rick Perry is a liar. He is actively lying about his support for TARP. We already had one president who lied in the White House, and we don't need another. My fellow Republicans, many of us had to hold our nose and vote for John McCain because he was the Republican Party nominee in 2008. Let's not do that again. Let's smell out the stench of hypocrisy and progressivism now before it's too late. Let's not put another liar in the White House, especially a liar that'll pander to such groups as fiscal conservatives and evangelical Christians only to lie to us later on. The Republican Party and the country deserve better. There's still plenty of time to pick one of the other candidates. 
if Rick Perry, who lies about his support for TARP, is the best that the Republican Party has to offer, then I'm ashamed to be a Republican. What's the point of replacing one liar in the White House with another? Obama, in my opinion, has damaged the brand of the Democratic Party. But President Clinton, when he lied, damaged not only the Democratic Party, but also the presidency and the country. Rick Perry will do likewise to we Republicans, the presidency, and the Republican Party. If he is lying now, what's to stop him from lying as president? I will not vote for a liar. Will you? I want to clarify the difference between political dirt and exposing the truth. When someone goes after one's past to pull up actions of ill repute on that person, such as, for example, having 10 girlfriends in college, or suffering a drinking and driving accident, or doing drugs. This is political dirt. I am not exposing political dirt. I am exposing the truth. Rick Perry is not flip-flopping on his support for TARP. He is lying about it. And as an aside, he and his political handlers should have known better. After all, look what happened to former Senator Bob Bennett of Utah with his support for TARP. It was the Tea Party movement that ousted Senator Bennett in the primary and led to the victory of Michael Lee, a much needed improvement in my opinion. And I am surprised at the gall that Rick Perry has to actually think he can lie about his support for TARP and get away with it. I also want to clarify one more thing. I'm not making this video to give Obama and his political drones ammunition against the Republican Party. In fact, it's the exact opposite. I want to take it away from them by exposing Rick Perry now rather than later when it might be too late. Let's look at the lie again. In fact, this time I have the lie on video. <laughs> Now I want to play this video one more time and show you the face of a liar, Rick Perry. There he is, smiling and looking at Miss Maxwell right in the eye. This is not the kind of person I want in the White House, let alone representing the Republican Party. And I will challenge any Rick Perry supporter, including his campaign staff and any politician that supports him, since the mainstream media is not doing its job. Why are you supporting a liar? And I am publicly calling out the Republican Party of Florida, as well as the following politicians and activists who are heading Perry's Presidency 5 operation in Orlando, Florida during the Fox News debate on September 22, 2011, including Florida House Speaker Dean Cannon. Conservative activist John Stenberger, president of the Florida Family Policy Council, and Pam Olson of the Florida Prayer Network, and Orange County Republican Chair Lou Oliver, and Pascal County GOP activist Bill Bunting, and Dr. A.K. Desai, CEO of Universal Healthcare Group, and State Senator Don Getz, and State Representative Rachel Burgeon. How do you all justify your support for Rick Perry when he lies about his support for TARP, otherwise known as the bank bailout? We Republicans can and must do much better than voting for Rick Perry. I will not vote for a lying Rick Perry. I want the truth and honesty back in politics. Will you vote for Rick Perry? who lied about TARP. When there's a bill that ends up on my desk as president, you, the public, will have five days to look online and find out what's in it before I sign it.
I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Ms. Lewinsky. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. Hi, Governor Perry. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming to Iowa. I have a quick question. You talked a lot about your record, and one thing that I was wondering about is your earlier support of TARP and how that you how got, that makes got, a difference. You got wrong information. You didn't. You never supported TARP. No, ma'am. No. I thought I saw a letter where you had actually written encouraging the support of no, of TARP legislation. Not you, at all. You saw wrong. Okay. Well, I appreciate your answer, sir. Sure. Well, it's that time of year. You've probably seen them already, the attack ads and the race for governor. So, who's telling the truth and who is blurring the facts? To help sort it all out, our News 4 WOAI troubleshooter Brian Collister is putting those ads to the truth test. Governor Rick Perry is hoping to sink his challenger, Kay Bailey Hutchison, by hanging the Wall Street bailout around her neck. I could not give a blank check for $700 billion to anyone. I wouldn't have given it to Ronald Reagan. Just one day later, Senator Hutchison bailed on Texans and voted for the $700 billion Wall Street bailout. That's true. Kay Bailey Hutchison did vote for the bailout. So did a lot of Republicans, including John McCain. But while Rick Perry slams his opponent, he fails to mention he also thought it was a good idea at the time. As president of the Republican Governors Association, Perry urged Congress to, in his words, act now on the day of the Senate vote last year. But as public anger over the bailout mounts, Perry is hoping voters hear what he is saying now instead of what he was saying at the time. As the campaign marches on, we'll be back with more political ads that we'll be putting to the truth test. I'm News 4 WOAI troubleshooter Brian Collister. And you can also watch our troubleshooter truth test about those ads at our website, WOAI.com. In fact, I signed a letter with uh, a governor of West Virginia who's a Democrat uh, when September, October a year ago when they were talking about, oh, my goodness, the, the economy is uh, tanking and uh, we've got to do something. And we signed a letter and basically said, you know, don't get all frozen up in fear. Act.